Welcome to a Kaitor Industries tutorial. And today I'm going to take you through this AV Famicom, a really slick um, Japanese version of the top loader that was sold in the US. But there are some key differences between this and the top loader. So let's take a quick look at this before we get started. Uh, so we have, of course, the top loader here uh, sold in North America and uh, the AV Famicom sold in Japan. So just a little bit different on the profiles. Um, of course the pinout is slightly different on the uh, NES the 72 pin and the Famicom the 60 pin, but there are adapters like this one here that has been 3D printed with an enclosure that will let you play uh, your NES games on the AV Famicom. And there are adapters to go vice versa as well for Famicom games on the uh, top loading NES. Now what makes the AV Famicom really unique is unlike all of the other models of the NES, this has the multi-out, the AV multi-out, hence the name AV Famicom. Uh, so the multi-out was used on the Super Nintendo, the N64, all the way up to the GameCube. And uh, because it has more pins, it's capable of transmitting um, composite video, S video, uh, and RGB, that nice crispy RGB that we want for our, um, you know, our upscalers like the RetroTINK, uh, FrameMeister, the OSSC, or connecting directly to a PVM, or maybe converting it to component video um, using, for example, like HD RetroVisions, SNES cables, or uh, the RetroTINK uh, RGB to comp. So there's a lot we can do with the RGB video. Unfortunately, from the factory, Unlike the Super Nintendo, this AV out is only wired for composite. Uh, we don't have S-Video and we don't have RGB. So what we're going to talk about in this, uh, this uh, video series is how to mod this AV Famicom for that S-Video and nice crispy RGB. So this is going to be a multi-part series. Um, part one, we're going to be going through a complete recap of the board. So I have here a console 5 recap kit. Uh, there's also a, uh, a new 78 SO5 power regulator, voltage regulator here. Um, there's also a audio restoration kit that we're going to be going through. And what that does is it restores the original intended audio because the engineer is actually messed up on this one. The audio does not sound correct. Um, not a huge difference, but when you hear the two uh, audio profiles, you will you will notice the difference. And um, you know some of the uh, some of the tracks are really blown out on this one, so we're going to restore this back to what it should be, uh, so we can get that really nice audio. Uh, so we're going to do that. Uh, now the capacitors on this are probably fine. This boots off. This runs okay. I did test it. You always want to make sure you test these before you start putting a soldering iron to them. Um, but it doesn't hurt. It's only a few dollars to replace the capacitors, you know, under, under a couple bucks to replace that voltage regulator. So you might as well do that. Give it a nice clean slate before we go through and do the other mods that uh, tend to be a little bit more power hungry once we start adding on these additional chips. Now, um, after we recap it, we're going to install the NES RGB. So this is a uh, all the components here from Tim Worthington out in Australia. Uh, really clever design here. Um, this has gone through a few different revisions and many of the videos that I've seen on YouTube are using older revision boards. So they are slightly different on how you jump it out, how you wire it. Um, of course, the audio mod is going to require some modifications to this board. So this video will hopefully give people a tool to follow along um, if you're using the newer revision NES RGB. And then lastly, after we do the recap of the new voltage regulator, the NES RGB and the audio restoration, we're going to move on to the final piece, which is the IGR or in-game routine. Um, so this is a board originally designed by Borti 4938, uh, but the layout has been modified by Voltar. He did an awesome job. Um, he incorporated one of the capacitors that you used to have to move, which is really neat. Um, it's a very slick, very easy to install board. So we're going to take you through that as well. All 
right, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove these four screws. We can gain access to the inside of the shell. Make sure you have the right bit to do this. Now with our four screws removed, we can go ahead and take the top of the shell apart. This shell simply splits open. Just be a little careful. You're not going to break anything. Comes off just like this. So let's see what we have to work with inside. All right. Well, this one actually looks very clean. I'm not seeing any obvious signs of damage, corrosion. This looks like it was a well taken care of console, which is really nice to see. Okay. So now we're going to need to switch over to our Phillips head screwdriver. And there's, uh, there's a few things we're going to have to take off here. We're going to have to take off uh, these screws here, these two here, and you'll also see there are uh, two screws behind this uh, heat sink shield here, right in here and right in here. So let's go ahead and zip those bad boys out. Okay, now the board is loose. These two screws, I'll, I'll just turn this upside down to get those out. See, they come right out, put those aside. Make sure you remember what goes where. So you have a shield at the bottom. You can leave that in for now and just put that aside. So this is our main board. This is what we're gonna be working on for the duration of the project. Uh, so a few different devices here. I'll point them out so you know what you're looking at. We have our PPU, our picture processing unit, right here. Uh, this we're actually going to be desoldering for the NEOS RGB in the next video. Uh, there's our CPU. Um, we're going to be uh, we're going to be working on the capacitors here, so taking these out and replacing them with fresh ones. Uh, so first thing we need to do before we start diving into these capacitors is take off uh, this shield that uh, acts as a heat sink for our voltage regulator. So turn the board over. And we have a, a few screws here. Let's just uh, go ahead and take these out. One more thing we have to do before we can take the shield off. See that screw right in there? That is connected to our voltage regulator. Cool, so now we have our board apart, everything is exposed, and honestly, looking at the condition of this board, guys, this is this is pristine. Uh, I don't see any reason why I need to clean this. I don't see evidence of corrosion. I don't see evidence of dust. Uh, this has got to be one of the nicest condition um, any Astro Famicom boards that I've personally taken apart. It just looks fantastic, and honestly, these capacitors are probably fine. We probably don't even need to replace them, but it was only a few dollars for the capacitor kit. Get them up to modern standards. Remember, capacitors do have a finite lifespan. Nothing lasts forever, particularly these capacitors. So while we're in here, we might as well just get them taken care of. So there's a few different capacitors that we're going to change out. So we're going to get rid of, uh, and before I do that, let's just zoom in so you can get a closer look at this. We're going to go through this board here together. So one of them, C15, which is right here, um, we're actually going to remove this completely. We're not even going to replace it. So the kit did come with one, uh, but the reason why we're not going to put it in is because we are installing the IGR board. The IGR board is what lets us uh, use the reset button or the controller pad inputs to change color palettes. We're gonna be taking that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that with my red Sharpie. Just makes it easier to identify. Uh, we also have C5, this 220 microfarad capacitor here. This is going to get directly replaced. C3 does need to come out. So we're going to be replacing C3. And uh, over here, this guy here, that's C4. 
that's a uh, one microfarad capacitor. We're going to be replacing that. Uh, so that's currently one candidate for deletion, and then three we're replacing. Down over this way, right here, uh, we have capacitor C, uh, that is uh, 14, C14. So that is a 47 microfarad. We're going to be replacing that guy. And then the big boy, C13. So this is a 1000 microfarad. So there are some uh, uh, different motherboard revisions, and they are labeled differently on the motherboard. Um, but the uh, the 1000 microfarad is what the recommended replacement is. So we're going to go ahead and replace that too. Let's go ahead and take that out. Uh, and then lastly, you can see this here, get a better angle from the front. Uh, that is the voltage regulator. You can read that, the uh, 7805. We're going to be taking that out, and we're going to re be replacing that with a 78S05, a more modern 5-volt voltage regulator. has a little bit more runway, 2-amp, uh, um, better heat management, uh, uh, higher maximum temperature, so it's a much more modern voltage regulator. So we're going to be taking that guy out as well. So let's... Go ahead and mark it out. Okay, now that we've identified our components, let's uh, turn on our soldering iron or desoldering station and get started. Now, before you do this, remember to clean your desoldering station. Uh, really important, if you don't take care of your equipment, uh, it's just not going to perform as well. And when your desoldering station is clogged, you know, filters are no good, there's a, a lot of extra solder globs clogging it up. It's just not going to have the suction power and uh, you're going to be fighting it the whole way trying to get out these capacitors. So let's let that equipment heat up and we'll get started. I've already gone through this board and uh, marked some of the legs on the back side with a red uh, sharpie just to save some time. I did that off camera. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to apply some fresh solder to each one of these and uh, use our desoldering station to pull that off. Um, before we do, let's open up this capacitor kit from Console 5, and I'm going to link the, uh, the link in the description below so you can go ahead and purchase that. Let's get this opened up. Now remember, we are not going to need the uh, 0.47 microfarad capacitor, this guy here. So we're going to just put that aside. Uh, if you are not installing the IGR board, you will need that capacitor. Let's apply some fresh solder to these legs. Put that mix in there good. Grab our desoldering gun. Go ahead and pull this out. One, two, three, four. And the next leg. Perfect. So if we flip this board around, this capacitor here, C15. We should be able to just give that a little wiggle. Pull that guy right out. That easy. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all of these other capacitors. Now that our capacitors are removed, it's time to tank out our voltage regulator. So let's go ahead and zip that guy out. First we're going to uh, apply some fresh solder to these pins.
Perfect. That's exactly what we want to see. Now, if all goes well, this should just come out with a... You don't want to force it. And it might be hot, but don't force it. You don't want to ruin the, uh, the pins, but give it a little jiggle. Sometimes you may still be on the... Uh, on the via. Yep, we have one contact here that just needs a little bit of convincing. So what we can do there is we can take our soldering iron and just touch it on that contact and let it let it break free. There we go. See, it pulls right out. Easy enough. And now our voltage regulator, she's out. Now that we have our 7805 pulled off the board and we have our brand new 78S05 ready for installation, we're going to grab some parts that we put aside earlier. So let's go ahead and zoom back out. We need to recover our uh, heat sink here and get our motherboard as well. And what we're going to do is what's called a dry fit. So we're going to temporarily reconnect our uh, our heat shield, heat sink rather, and put that on uh, so that we can solder this in place and it's correctly aligned with the right height on the board. So let's get those screws zipped in. Great, so now we have our three screws installed, the two screws here that hold down the heat sink. And there's also one more back in here that you can see that holds in the voltage regulator. Now you wanna put all three in, and this is just a dry fit so that we can get the correct height set when we solder in those pins. So now you can see our voltage regulator poking through the bottom of this board right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean up this work area real quick with some 91% isopropyl alcohol. You can use a, a nylon brush or a toothbrush or you know, a Q-tip. Just clean this area up a little bit. There we go. I don't want to get those fibers pulled apart on the pins. Uh, now we're just going to grab a little bit of our No Clean Flux. A little dab right there. And uh, hit this real quick with some solder. Now, I don't think this is going to short out on the uh, the shield underneath, but I'm going to clip these down anyway, just to be safe. Just take a little bit off, so it's about the same height as the nearby pins. So I'll use my flush cuts to cut each of these, just to get that height down a little bit. Perfect. Now, clean up that work area again. There we go. That's it. Our voltage regulator is installed. Now we're actually going to need to take that heat shield, heat sink back off uh, because we're going to have to do some modifications later for the AV plug, uh, which is uh, this here. So let's go ahead and zip that back off once again. With our voltage regulator installed, we can move on to the next step, which is installing some of these capacitors. So let's start from the back of the board. We'll Start with uh, uh, C13 here, the 1000 microfarad capacitor. Make sure you align it with the, uh, the labels on the board for negative and positive. Just slide that all the way through. Spin that around. We're just going to tack this in place real quick. Perfect. Make sure that that is... Uh, flush with the board. You may have to move that around just a little bit to get that in place. Perfect. That's right where we want it. 
the solder joint here is on a big ground plane, so it can take a little while to heat up, but there we go. Perfect. Go ahead and clip those leads. So next up, let's tackle C14 right here. C14 is our 47 uh, microfarad capacitor. So there's only one of those. Again, make sure you have the polarity correct. Move on to C5. Uh, this is one that we have to install a little bit differently than when it was originally on the board from the factory. Uh, C5 is our 220 microfarad capacitor. Uh, only one of these. But what we have to do so that it doesn't conflict with the NES RGB is we have to uh, bend the legs over so that it lays flat on the board. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's go ahead and insert this. Okay, now if you were to install it like this, oops, just like this, uh, the issue is it's actually going to conflict with the NES RGB. So what we're going to want to do is pull that up just a little bit and go ahead and bend that over so it lays flat, just like that. Okay, so let's go around to the other side and tack that into place. Great, let's inspect our work on the other side before we clip those legs. That is exactly what we want to see. Now we only have two more to go. C3 and C4. These are both one microfarad capacitors, uh, these little guys here. So we're going to go ahead and separate that just by clipping the legs. Perfect. And they're going to go into these locations here.
Well done. Now that that's complete, we can clip these legs. And inspect our work. Everything looks really good. All right, cool. So at this point, our board recap is complete. It's really that easy. There's nothing else to it. We've inspected our work. Uh, we don't have any cold solder joints. Everything is, is firmly attached. Our voltage regulator is replaced at this point. Uh, what I like to do is I like to just hit pause and hook this up to a display with an AV cable and a power supply and just make sure it boots up. Because if we don't and we keep moving forward and we install the RGB board and we run into trouble, it's going to make troubleshooting that much more difficult. So every time you get between a major stop, stop, pause, plug it in, make sure it's still functioning before moving forward. It's booting up great. Everything's working smooth. That means our recap was successful. We can move on to the next step. Now that we have our board back on our work table, one thing that we want to do real quick is cycle our power button. What that's going to do is discharge the capacitors. Just leave that on for a second. That's all it takes. And there we go. That's it. That wasn't so bad, was it? We've successfully deleted C15, recapped this board with fresh capacitors, installed a brand new voltage regulator, and now we're all teed up to remove the PPU and install the NES RGB. And that'll come in part two of this video. Thanks for watching.